Hello and welcome to Conspiracy Boulder. You're not a boulder, you're a rock! And what he has told you is an absolute lie. In my 13 years as mayor and my recent re-election, I have never had anybody talk to me in that manner. I told him I have never been spoken to by anybody in my career as mayor as that man spoke to me. And so I just, and then the next night at the commission meeting, the chief said, the sheriff wants you to call him. I said, I'm sorry, but I'll never talk to that man again. Wanted. Caucasian man, mid-50s, investigated by the police on 10 different occasions. Accusations, excessive force, theft, and false arrest. And the suspect is this man. That's right, Scott Israel. Israel is hoping we'll forget his checkered past. So much so, five of Israel's internal affairs reports have gone missing. Sorry, Scott Israel. No one is above the law. Welcome to To Life L'Chaim. On today's episode, host Rabbi Yaakov Thompson talks with the Sheriff of Broward County, Florida, Scott Israel, about the current state of law enforcement and how his Judaism plays a role in his decisions as Sheriff. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome to To Life L'Chaim. This week we have a very special guest. It is our honor to be welcoming Sheriff Scott Israel, the Sheriff of Broward County, Florida, to L'Chaim Studios and to Jewish Life TV. Sheriff, I want to thank you for being here. Pleasure to be here, Rabbi. You know, first thing I got to get it out, like, how did a good Jewish boy, <laughs> did your mother want you to be a sheriff not when really, you grew up? Not, did you tell, not really. How did it happen? Well, I grew up in, in the Bronx, and um, my dad uh, was a lifelong law enforcement uh, officer. He served 25 uh, years in New York City, and then he did another 21 years down in Palm Beach. So he did about 45, 46 years. So it's kind of a family business, so to speak. Uh -huh. well, uh, being Jewish and from the Bronx, a Bronx boy, but that's good. It means you're tough. Nobody's going to mess <laughs> with you to begin with. <laughs> Uh, and I'm sure your father, the Shomer Society, NYPD, yeah. uh, I mean, that's got a long, rich history. It does. Uh, but do you think they're being Jewish is presenting special challenges as you moved up the ranks? or? Not really. Uh, I can honestly say I, I realize, uh, you know, that anti-Semitism still abounds today, unfortunately, as the racism and hate crimes. But uh, I could say I, I, I was never a, a victim of it or never... Uh, you know uh, that I know that I knew about it was aware of a, a victim of any type of anti-Semitism. So I've been fortunate in that respect. But real quickly, <clears throat> uh, Jewish institutions, dangerous time. Any special advice for them? Before same you go out? same advice. Be vigilant. Every one of our captains, they know every Jewish institution in their districts. Uh, but I, I think the community has such a positive relationship with us that they know if we, if we make a mistake, I'm going to own up to it, we're going to handle it, we're going to investigate it, and it's going to be done thoroughly.
Brianna, we are learning of some serious confusion experienced by law enforcement and first responders here last Wednesday. The Coral Springs police chief telling the Orlando Sun Sentinel that the Broward County Schools surveillance cameras were on a 20 minute delay. That means in the pursuit of the suspect, while they thought they were looking at real time video of where they could find him, they weren't. Those images were 20 minutes old. I be vigilant. Think outside the box. If you see something that's not right, call us. Call 911. You can't overwork us. Um, if there's a vehicle in a certain park or a certain school or in the port or the airport that doesn't belong there, call us. So we can't do it alone. Let me ask, <clears throat> are we too complacent or are we too paranoid? That's a great question. I, there are, you know, uh, I don't really know. You know, there's an old saying about being paranoid. Just because you're paranoid doesn't right, mean you ain't being followed. Right. So I don't know that you can be too paranoid, but you can be too complacent. So I would say, you know, um, to err on the side <clears throat> of absolutely. And you call nine one one. If my dispatchers tell you that it's not an emergency call, I told them I watched TV and I saw Sheriff Israel, and he said to be vigilant and not to be complacent. And if we saw something out of the ordinary, then you know, we thought it was a danger to it. To err on the side of caution and call nine one one. This was filmed by a neighbor uh, that, that appears from the sound of it to, to be a BB gun, but his neighbor filmed him shooting that weapon there out in public in broad daylight, October of last year. We just got this video in. Chris Swecker, again, I, I, you know, you put this back into this uh, collection of signs here. So you, you got a guy firing a gun outside. I, I, I've spoken to someone who, who lived close to him who said that the police had been called to his house a number of times for strange or sometimes violent, violent behavior. Again, folks at home, and again, I, I, I know you guys have a difficult job, no question, but that's a lot, of, a lot of warning signs pointing in the direction of someone who, just, who, who looked like they needed help. Agreed. I think we'd be hard put to find another case of a mass shooter that was flashing more signs than, than this young man right here. Because although a lot of people are in jail, don't deserve to be there. And we take a soft and holistic approach about keeping people out of jail, especially kids. Where if our deputies encounter a juvenile who's committed his or her first offense and it's a misdemeanor, you know, a misdemeanor, not a felony, I don't allow our deputies to arrest that individual. We take that juvenile and we put him in a civil citation program. If we take these kids and we put them in jails, we're taking them from this side of the house to this side of the house. And instead of keeping them in society with their parents, with their families, with their teachers and their mentors, we're putting them in, in prisons with other kids. You need to have some gun control reform. 18 year olds should never have a rifle. Because although a lot of people are in jail, don't deserve to be there. And we take a soft and holistic approach about keeping people out of jail, especially kids. What so I'm if an individual was threatened and it was real, that's a crime. But it, if he's posting yes, things... they were threatened with death. They were threatened that they were going to bleed. They were threatened that they were going to be killed. Well, because although a lot of people are in jail, don't deserve to be there. And we take a soft and holistic approach about keeping people out of jail, especially kids. What's your specific case? And he had already taken bullets and knives to school. He had already assaulted people. He assaulted his parent. He assaulted other students. 39 visits. And this was w w known. To we take a soft and holistic approach about keeping people out of jail, especially kids. So 30, the, you're to saying the 39 visits. law enforcement the, community. You're, now, I'm not, look, I'm not saying that you can be everywhere at once. No. But this is what I'm talking you're, you're about. We have to follow up on these red flags. You're, you're not the litmus that meets test. The, doesn't you, that meet the You're standard? absolutely not the litmus test. If we make a mistake, 
I'm going to own up to it. We're For how law enforcement should follow up, you're wrong. There weren't 39 visits. Some of them, they were GOA. Some of them called from other states. We take a soft and holistic approach about keeping people out of jail, especially kids. But the message is to let our investigators, and we've done amazing work that we can't talk about, but I'm, I'm here to assure you we've done amazing work. But to the community, I'd say <clears throat> be vigilant. Think outside the box. What bothers me is I wish I had gotten there sooner and to stop this. So for me, you know, I'm glad that I could help just one kid. And I think that's for everybody here, you know, the SWAT medics that were there, the regular medics, the, you know, just, yeah, I, I helped one kid or two kids. And that was, you know, I wish I could have helped them all. And we take a soft and holistic approach about keeping people out of jail, especially kids. A Sheriff Scott Israel says he will not step down amid major criticism. I'm the sheriff. My name's on the door. Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel not backing down. Leaders are responsible for the agency, but leaders are not are responsible for a person. A number of people arguing that it's inexcusable how Israel's department missed a decade of warning signs. The people responsible are the ones who took the calls and didn't follow up on them, as it was with the FBI, uh, as it was with, with, any, with any person. Leaders are responsible for the agency, but leaders are not are responsible for a person.